Hello and welcome to a video on fractional indices. Now our first question to you that I would like you to think about is what do you think the answer to this is? 9 raised to the power a half. I'll give you a few moments to think about that. Right, so in order to calculate this, what I'd like you to think about is this. Let's say we were to multiply this. So let's say we were to multiply 9 raised to the power half by another 9 to the power half. Now, if you think back to your basic laws of indices, and in particular, the addition law, what happens when we multiply things with the same base? Well, when we multiply things with the same base, we add our indices together. So 9 to the power half multiplied by 9 to the power half is 9 to the power a half plus a half, or a half plus a half is just 1. So it's 9 to the power 1, or... We could just write 9. We don't need that power there. And now we can see that when we multiply this by itself, we get an answer of 9. So what is this number? Well, it has to be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. That's the only way of getting 9 by multiplying two numbers that are the same. Because we know these are identical, so they must be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 to the power half, let's just write it out here, 9 to the power half equals 3. Now let's do another one. Let's say we wanted to calculate 64 to the power half. Now again, in order to calculate what this is, let's first of all multiply it by itself. So let's multiply it by 64 to the power a half. And again, if we just use our basic laws of indices, when we multiply things with the same base, what do we do with our indices? Well, we add them together. So 64 to the power half multiplied by 64 to the power half is going to be 64 to the power of a half plus a half, which is just 1. And again, we don't need that 1. 64 to the power of 1 is just exactly the same as 64. So when we multiply 64 to the power of half by itself, we get 64. So what is this number? Well, it has to be 8, because 8 times 8 equals 64. And we know that these two things are identical. So we can say that 64... So the power half equals 8. And now I just want you to pause and think about whether you can spot a relationship between this base here and our answer. And the relationship is that this number, our answer, is just the square root of our base. So 3 is the square root of 9 and 8 is the square root of 64. So whenever we raise something to the power half, we are taking the square root. So, for example, if I wanted to calculate 100 to the power half, well, that is exactly the same as the square root of 100, which is 10. And let's just do one more. Let's say we wanted to calculate 1 to the power half. Well, 1 to the power half is exactly the same as the square root of 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So we can just come up with a general rule for this. So what I've written down here is that whenever we raise something to the power half, that's exactly the same as taking the square root of that number. Now what I'd like you to think about is 8 to the power 1 third. Now, in order to calculate what this is, what I'm going to do is just like before, I'm going to multiply this by itself. So I'm going to multiply it by 8 to the power 1 third, but then I'm also going to multiply it by itself again. So I'm going to multiply it by 8 to the power 1 third again. And again, if we use our basic laws of indices, when we multiply things with the same base, we just add our indices together. So I'm going to add all of these one thirds together. So 8 to the power third times itself three times is going to be 8 to the power of a third plus a third plus a third, which is just 1. Or instead of just writing 8 to the power 1, again, I don't need that 1. So that is just exactly the same as 8. So similar to before, Instead of multiplying two things together to get our answer, we've now got three things that multiply together to get our answer. So something times something times something equals eight, and those three somethings are exactly the same. Well, this must be two, because two times two times two equals eight. So we can say that eight to the power one third equals two. Let's do another one. Let's say we wanted to calculate 1,000 to the power a third. And again, to calculate this, I'm going to multiply it by itself three times. So 1,000 to the power third times itself three times 
Well, that's going to be a thousand to the power of a third plus a third plus a third, which is one. So it's just one thousand. So this time we've got three things that multiply together to get a thousand and they are all the same. So what times what times what gives us a thousand? Well, that would be 10 because 10 times 10 times 10 gives us a thousand. So we can say here that 1000 to the power a third equals 10. And hopefully, similar to before, you've spotted a pattern between our base and our answer. And the relationship is that our answer is just the cube root of our base. So 2 is the cube root of 8, and 10 is the cube root of 1000. So, so far, we've found that when we raise something to the half power, that's exactly the same as taking the square root. And now we've found out that when we raise something to the third power, that's the same as taking the cube root. Now, what do you think would happen if we raise something to the quarter power? And yes, you would be correct if you said that that is the same as taking the fourth root. And let's just prove this. Let's say we wanted to calculate 81 to the power one quarter. Now, because this power is a quarter, I'm going to multiply it, multiply it by itself four times. So 81 to the power one quarter multiplied by itself four times is going to be 81 because the quarter powers just add up to one. So now we've got four things that multiply together to get 81. So to calculate this, well, we need to take the fourth root. Now, if you didn't already know this, this the answer is three. You could use a calculator, but three times three times three times three gives us 81. So there's a special relationship between our powers and our roots. And notice how the denominator of our power is just what root we take our number to. So when we take something to the third power, we take the third root. When we say, take something to the fourth power, we take the fourth root. And when we take something to the second power, we take the second root. And there is an invisible two there, we just don't write it. So for all of these rules, we can come up with a general rule just to represent what's going on. So this is basically saying that whenever we raise something to a fractional power, where n is our denominator, that is exactly the same as taking the nth root of that number. Okay, so it's over to you now. Pause the video and see if you can calculate these six questions here. Okay, so I'm assuming you've paused the video and had a go at these. So the first one, 16 to the power half, well, that's exactly the same as taking the square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. 49 to the power half, well, again, that's the square root of 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. This one here, this time we're raising it to the third power, so we're going to take the cube root. So it's the cube root of 125. So some number multiplied by itself three times gives us 125. Well, that number is five because five times five is 25. And then 25 times five is 125. OK, one to the power one eighth. So we're going to take the eighth root of one. So some number multiplied by itself eight times gives us one. It's not a trick question. That is one. OK, the next one. So we're going to take the fourth root of 10,000, the fourth root of 10,000, and that is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000, 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. And last but not least, 32 to the 1 fifth power, well, that is going to be the fifth root of 32, and the fifth root of 32 is 2. So hopefully you enjoyed that video on fractional indices. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.